Hello, I want to welcome you to our YouTube channel, Escaping the Revolving Door. I'm John LeMaster. You're viewing the seventh video session now of a 12-session course entitled Escaping the Revolving Door of Prison. Be sure to view sessions one through six uh, so that you can get a better understanding of the full course content and why this course of study is, is so different from other courses uh, you may have taken to help you with your rehabilitation. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below, if you will, and give us a thumbs up uh, if you find this video helpful. In our last session, uh, session number six, entitled Skills Assessment and Common Interview Questions, we covered part one of Unable to Secure Suitable Employment, which is the fourth of the seven major contributors inmates told us that caused them to reoffend after being released from prison. They told us that when they were released and looking for a job, that they, John, they just couldn't find a, a position that paid an adequate salary for them to pay their bills. And because they either lacked the suitable skills required or they just didn't know how to secure suitable employment uh, with the skills they possessed. Uh, in this class, we started the process of learning the necessary ingredients uh, to finding suitable employment by first developing an understanding of the law of sowing and reaping, and stated that anything that you put your time, your energy, uh, your money, or your focus on is actually an act of sowing. And what you reap depends on uh, what kind of seed you're sowing. Uh, there's going to be a harvest, so we have to be careful. Uh, what we're going to sow. Uh, next, we discussed utilizing what we call the three P's of marketing yourself. Your previous experience, portable skills, sometimes referred to as transferable skills, and then personality factors, and gave de definitions and examples of those skills and factors to help you develop your own listing of skills so that you could use those on applications and your resumes. Then we looked at how to begin to prepare now for that <laughs> dreaded job interview process by pairing up and role-playing the interview process with a friend or inmate to practice answering the most common interview questions. Uh, by practicing your answers, it helps you prepare and structure your answers and keep you from fumbling for an answer. We also covered 25 of the most commonly uh, asked questions that interviewers ask and then gave suggested answers to 10 of the most difficult questions. Uh, then we covered how to address and respond to the felony question. That's sure to come up by taking full responsibility for your actions and explaining to the interviewer how you have turned your life completely around. And then finally we covered interviewing tips that give you confidence and prior to and during that interview. In this session, session number seven, entitled 10-Step Interview Prep and Effective Resume, resume Writing, uh, we want to cover the second part of Unable to Secure Suitable Employment, which is the fourth of the major uh, contributors inmate told us uh, that caused them to reoffend after being released from prison. As I mentioned earlier, uh, they couldn't secure suitable employment uh, because they lacked the skills they needed or didn't know how to secure suitable employment with the skills they had. Uh, first, we want to go through the details of a 10-step interview pr uh, preparation plan and then get a good understanding of how to properly prepare and format a resume by describing the various sections of a resume and what should be included in each section uh, in order to prepare a resume that gets you results. Remember, a resume doesn't get you a job. It gets you an interview where you can convince the interviewer that you are absolutely the best person for that available job. Before release from prison, then inmates are often required to write a resume. So this class will be very beneficial in giving you some instruction, some guidance on how to go about writing an effective resume. A former graduate of this course used what we learned in this class to write a, uh, write a resume and, and, and prepare for a job interview. And unbelievably, he, he thought he was hired immediately for the first job that he applied for. 
So what we'll be covering in this session will go a long way in helping you secure that good-paying job you need. Now let's cover the 10-step interview preparation plan to help you get prepared for that dreaded job interview. Step number one is develop a thorough listing of your skills and strength. Now, you should have already completed this step from class number six. If not, then go back and review and develop your skills listing using the three P's of self-marketing that I brought out in class six. That's a previous experience, portable skills, and personality factors. Uh, step two, uh, compare your skills and qualifications to the job description requirements. Uh, first of all, John, what is a job description or a job specification? Well, a job description is a document that clearly states what the job title is, who the position reports to, uh, the job overview description, uh, and essential job requirements and qualifications, uh, maybe job duties, responsibilities, and the skills required to perform a specific job, and also may include minimum education requirements or even other factors needed for success in the job. The following is a sample job description for a, a construction worker that gives you an idea of what would normally be included uh, and, and a job description. Let's look at, at a, a construction worker. Uh, who's he report to? Well, he reports to the construction manager uh, or a foreman. And uh, here's, a, here's an overview description. Our construction company needs workers to staff multiple upcoming projects. Uh, we're hiring on a temporary basis to start, but if you show up on time and perform excellent quality work, uh, we're willing to consider full-time employment prospects in the near future. We're looking for construction workers with experience in concrete finishing, carpentry, and other specialties, but we can also take on individuals with no prior experience. Uh, we offer safe educational training on the job as, as well as opportunities for advancement. Uh, temporary jobs can become permanent if you apply yourself and work hard. Uh, here's a list of the responsibilities and the, and the duties. Uh, perform all duties assigned by the construction manager or the foreman. Uh, carry materials and supplies from, from the trucks uh, to the job site so they're ready for installation or other task. Uh, clean up the job site at the end of the day and, and ensure all equipment is properly secure for the night. And then learn different skills. Learn carpentry, electrical work, plumbing, and other specialized skills as, re as required by the construction manager as you work with someone who's knowledgeable in those areas. And then follow instructions to ensure safe safety of the entire team. Here's a list of the qualifications and skills. Experience on the construction crew preferred but not required. Willingness to learn construction skills on site. Uh, excellent verbal communication skills, obviously. Uh, ability to work in all kinds of weather conditions. You know that's going to happen. High school diploma or GED preferred. Able to pass drug and background screening. And will consider nonviolent offender felons who have proven they have turned their lives around and are rehabilitated. Uh, this j job description I've, I've gotten from uh, uh, a company called BetterTeam.com. Well, let's look at analyzing the description. Most open employment positions have a well-stated job description. So before you go into that interview, be sure you review the, describe, the job description uh, that you're applying for. Doing so will help you shape your responses to the interviewer's questions. Uh, list the knowledge, the skills, and the abilities required for the position. And then make a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, compare what the employer is seeking to your own qualifications. Uh, see if you know if the qualities and skills needed uh, for the position, you can tailor your answers and even write your resume to show how you have the necessary skills for the position. For example, if you know the position requires you to work with Microsoft Word software, 
Well, you can talk about how you use that software on past projects or classes you've taken. And, and, we'll, <clears throat> and somewhere in your resume, you'd like to add that comment somewhere in the career statement or career summary or our summary of qualifications section. Uh, we'll cover this more in detail later on in the video. Um, step number three, develop and write your resume and send it out to job posting sites or to companies and send hard copies to companies that have job openings. Now, I'll be covering this, uh, this step in a lot of detail later in this video session uh, when we d discuss how to uh, develop and format and write an effective resume that gets you results. Step number four, anticipate questions interviewers are going to ask and prepare your responses when? Absolutely right now. Uh, getting an offer... Uh, actually begins long before you're seated across a table from a hiring manager or, or an interviewer. Uh, prepare for tough questions uh, so you won't be surprised. If you lack conviction when responding to a difficult question, it may kill your momentum and cause the hiring manager to decide against you. So avoid getting thrown off by anticipating typically tough questions and thinking through and practicing your responses in advance to these questions. Review the 25 most commonly asked interview questions list and the 10 I gave suggested answers to from class number six and then practice answering them out loud. The idea is not to memorize answers so your uh, replies sound like they've been canned but give you confidence in answering difficult questions. And as I mentioned in class number six, practice with a friend. If you have a friend who's also preparing for an interview, consider preparing together. Uh, let them play the part of the interviewer and you play the part of the one seeking employment. Then what? You, you switch roles. Not only will this give you a way to structure your preparation, but it'll also give, help you be comfortable and will uh, help give you well thought out answers and examples of your accomplishments. Practice giving concise, complete answers while maintaining eye contact with the interviewers while you're giving them. Make sure you aren't speaking too slow or too fast and that your answers are stated with confidence. Know basically what you want to talk about before you go into that interview. If you're stumbling and fumbling for an answer on a very basic question, you're not going to come across in a very positive manner to the interviewer. Have your basic answers structured to answer the question clearly. Then step number five, seek background information on the company. This is going to help you answer questions and stand out from the less prepared candidates. Uh, research the company thoroughly. You should also be ready to talk in depth about the industry, the organization, and the position you're applying for. Uh, know as much about the company as you possibly can. Uh, you can't change your employment history or your qualifications, but you can work harder than any other applicant by being supremely knowledgeable about the company. Uh, your goal is to stand out from the crowd. Use the company's website, uh, their annual report, uh, newspaper, business articles, and, and magazines, to gather as much information as possible about what the company does. And know the name of the CEO, the chief executive officer of the organization, and review the organization's background and mission statement. Just knowing the CEO's name and the company's mission statement is going to give you a distinct advantage over other applicants. A company I worked for years ago had a mission statement, better and faster than anyone else in the world. Using this mission statement, here's an example of how you could use it to gain an advantage in an interview. You know, I believe in your company's mission statement of being better and faster than anyone else in the world, and I feel I can contribute to that mission by taking on responsibility and learning all I can to make this position to a, into a career to help implement the points in the company mission statement. I want to work for a company that's driven to excellence in everything they provide and doing so in a timely and efficient way. 
<laughs> See how that using the company's own mission statement can give you an advantage without mentioning one single one of your skills or your accomplishments. Next, understand the players involved. Do some basic research about the specific person or the people who will be interviewing you. Make sure you know you'll be uh, who who you be, you be conducting your interview. Uh, call, call e or email ahead and uh, ask if if you'll be interviewing with one person or a whole team. Uh, learn your interviewer's name and job position uh, before going into the interview. And for added comfort, even look up the interviewer on Facebook or LinkedIn. It can give you a feel for what they look like and, and, and it just, just give you a little a comfort level uh, when you go into that interview so you'll know what to expect. However, I want to warn you, don't bring up any personal information that you find on Facebook in the interview. Uh, they'll be offended at that for sure. Uh, step number six, dress for success. Selecting your interview outfit, outfit is extremely important because first impressions are powerful. So don't scramble for an outfit a few hours before your interview. Choose your outfit a few days before to avoid another stressor uh, the day of the interview. You have only one chance to make a good first impression. You should look as if you fit into the organization. Dress up rather than being too casual. An interview prep counselor that I read about says, uh, be well-groomed and business-like. In any uh, workplace, your wardrobe is a sign of your professionalism and is sometimes used to gauge your level of competence. If you come in with, with pink shoes and a bright yellow shirt, oh, they're going to remember you all right, but not how you want to be remembered. Both men and women uh, should choose subdued colors, blues, browns, grays, and blacks that make a professional impression. And then plug in that iron. Make sure your clothes are neat, lint, and wrinkle-free. Uh, men should choose a white shirt, a dark-colored suit and tie if that's required, and, and dark-colored shoes. And women should choose a white or a solid-colored blouse that is not low-cut, a, a dark skirt or slacks, and dark-colored shoes. If you're unsure of the customary interview clothing expected by the company, simply ask the human resources representative. Uh, there's no shame in it. There is shame in feeling horribly underdressed when you show up for an interview. And if possible, cover your exposed tattoos. You know, this is, this is uh, sometimes a, a, a sore point with uh, guys, uh, especially at the prisons we teach at, though, he said, the, the tattoos are becoming more acceptable as more and more men and women are getting tattoos, and many famous people even have them. Uh, some employers consider tattoos in a negative way. Uh, even if you're very proud of your tattoos, give them a chance to know you before they judge you negatively by your outward appearance. Impairance. For jo some jobs, a tattoo would not be objectionable, but it depends on what the interviewer considers objectionable. My wife Kathleen has a relative that graduated from a prestigious culinary art college uh, that applied for a job at a high-end, swanky restaurant. And the interviewer told her they would love to hire her because she graduated with honors. But they said customers often ask to see the cook if they were impressed by the taste and presentation of a meal. And, and many co customers consider tattoos objectionable. So dress to impress. Be sure that your overall appearance is neat and clean and businesslike. Step number seven, plan what to bring and know the location of the interviewer. Uh, being... Bring extra copies of your resume on quality paper. Uh, bring a notepad or, or a professional binder and, and, and an ink pen. Uh, you should have a list of references with you in case they ask you to supply them. Now, also being, uh, bring information you might need to, to complete an application, like the skills and strength you, you developed uh, using the three P's of self-marketing yourself. You know, I don't think I can overemphasize enough. 
planning what to bring. I know of a young man who went to an audition for an important singing contest that he should have easily won. He had a fabulous voice. But he left his accompaniment CD at the hotel, and he came in second place uh, because of it. He missed out on a great opportunity by not planning well. Find out where you're, where, where, uh, where you're going for the interview, too. Uh, there's nothing worse than being perfectly prepared, uh, but coming in late uh, because you got lost or stuck in traffic. Uh, definitely utilize a, a GPS on your phone um, or, or print out directions. If you can't even drive by the location of the interview a, a day or two before, this will give you the chance to scope out a place to park if you'll be driving and give yourself plenty of time on the day of the interview. If you're going to be taking public transportation like a, a bus or a train, Give yourself even more time than you think is absolutely necessary. Step eight, what do you do during the interview? Well, first of all, you be mindful of your nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication speaks volumes. You're going to learn in our class number 11 on communication that 93% of communication is actually nonverbal. Uh, that's your tone of voice, uh, the gestures you make, your facial expression, your eye movements, how you're dressed, and, and, and your overall appearance. But remember that waiting room behaviors may be reported too. Uh, project confidence. Smile. Establish eye contact. Use a firm handshake, not a fish handshake, a ha firm handshake. A smile is a first good impression that should be made along with that firm handshake. Posture counts. Uh, sit up straight yet comfortably during the interview. Be aware of and avoid nervous gestures such as foot tapping or, or hand tapping on a table. Uh, be attentive. Don't stare, but maintain good eye contact while addressing all the aspects of an interviewer's questions and respect their space. Don't place anything on their desk without asking them or, or getting their okay. Uh, turn off your cell phone, both the ringer and the vibrator, and even put it away. Put it in your pocket or jacket. So if the screen lights up to reveal an incoming call, uh, you won't be distracted. And then manage your reactions. Those facial expressions provide great clues to your inner feelings. Manage how you, how you react and project a positive image. The interviewer may ask questions you really didn't anticipate. Uh, to prepare for these, one interviewer uh, counselor suggests thinking of specific examples of accomplishments or challenges you faced in your field of work. And then draw on experiences from classes or past jobs to demonstrate your skills and your qualities. Bring, a, bring that notebook, as I mentioned, that, with a few bullet points to remind you of the skills you want to showcase. Uh, this will show the interviewer that you're totally prepared and that you really want this job. Bring up your desire to advance in the job by mentioning that you'll t take on more responsibility and that you're looking to develop a career. Uh, you're not just filling a position to make a few bucks. Uh, many interviews end with, uh, with this question, do you have any questions for us? So be prepared with a question list. As, as I mentioned in class six, you can even, be, uh, even say, in preparing for today's meeting, I took some time to jot down a few questions. Please allow me to review my notes. They won't have any problem with that. Author and consultant Brad Harker suggests seeking answers to at least the following questions during the interview. Uh, in your opinion, what makes this company a great place to work? And what are the opportunities for advancement? Uh, what are the biggest challenges I'll face in the first 90 days? And how will, that, how will my success be measured? Ask questions assuming that they're going to hire you. Uh, what would you want to know if you stepped into the job on the very first day? And then step number nine. The morning of the interview. 
How you spend the hours before your interview can set the tone for your performance during the interview. Uh, prepare physically. Uh, interview morning is the time to gather your materials, dress the part, and put on your game face. <laughs> prepare mentally. Uh, don't wing it when it comes to an attitude to bring to your interview. Don't be down on yourself. Oh, I'll never get this job. But be, be positive. Take time before you leave the house to regroup mentally and get into that professional mindset. You should be upbeat, enthusiastic, positive, and eager, uh, interview counselor Belinda Plutz says. If you believe that you're going to be the ideal person for the job, uh, you have a good chance of convincing the interviewer. And then prepare spiritually. Don't leave that out. Pray and ask God to give you a calm, confident attitude and ask Him to help you answer the questions asked as we have taught you in this course. And don't forget to ask God to give you a favor with the interview. That's, that's really key. Show up in the best possible shape. Make sure you arrive 15 to 20 minutes before the scheduled interview time. Go to bed early uh, the day before. Uh, and, and before the interview so that you'll look rested and healthy on that big day. The interviews in the morning, be sure to eat a healthy breakfast, a uh, with fruits and grains, they'll help improve your brain function and, 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 and leave you feeling more alert and invigorated. Then, if you're, if you're kind of tense and anxious, consider exercising before the interview to lower that stress level and increase your blood flow, but make sure to shower uh, after exercising. And then step 10, make sure you follow up after the interview by sending a thank you letter to your interviewer. Now is a good time to thank the person you interviewed with, even if it's nothing more than just a formality. You can say something like this, Dear interviewer's name, thank you for the opportunity to discuss my qualifications with you. I remain very impressed by your company and invite you to contact me if you have any further questions. I look forward to hearing from you about this position. And if you missed any important points in the interview you really wanted to bring out but forgot, you can include one or two in your thank you letter. But keep the points brief and, and, and tie them into a discussion point that, that maybe the interviewer made during the interview. And then follow up the, with the interviewer at an appropriate time. Uh, the standard time to hear back from an interviewer about a position is about two weeks. It can depend, but uh, if you waited past that designated callback date or time and, and, um, uh, and it hasn't really been set and it's been two weeks, go ahead and follow up the, uh, the interviewer in a short email. Uh, you can just send, say something like this, Dear interviewer's name, I interviewed at your company at such and such date. And I, I'm still interested in, in the position, uh, if it hasn't been filled. I'd greatly appreciate any information you might have about my candidacy. I look forward to hearing from you. You know, while you can't control your past experience or, or the way someone else compares against you, um, you can control how dedicated you are to showing the interview you really want this job. Uh, there's, a, there's a beautiful line that says, don't be needy, don't be greedy, but be persistent and courteous. And then during the interview, you've done everything right leading up to the interview. Now it's showtime. To avoid blowing your moment of truth, treat your interview as nothing more than a conversation. While conventional wisdom indicates that the job interview puts the candidate on the hot seat <laughs> to, so to speak, to be grilled by that potential employer, in fact, in, effective interviews should really be a two-way street. Uh, don't try to just sell yourself, but try to find out if the position in the company you're applying for is the right fit for you, says Heidi Baldwin, account supervisor at J Public Relations. Ask about the culture. Uh, what qualities are needed in a candidate? And what will you be expected uh, uh, to do by the manager? And then try to connect with the interviewers. 
research has shown that differing too much from your interviewer can backfire when it comes to handing uh, landing a job instead demonstrating similarity to the hiring team can help create alignment with the decision makers and participate actively during the interview participating actively uh, during the interview shows uh, gives a good impression and and shows you're really interested in, in in this job and ask questions to bond with the interviewer and project your enthusiasm inquire about his or her position and background and how long has he he or she have been with the company remember to show courtesy to everyone during the interview this means everyone from the reception staff to the interviewer uh, you never know who has input in the hiring process and you can only make a first impression one time uh, look everyone in the eye and smile as i've mentioned looking people in the eye will telegraph alertness and smiling what does it do that signals friendliness even treat the secretary uh, with respect because she may be the boss's daughter you know don't play around on your phone or your electronic device while you're waiting in the waiting room and then during the during the interview keep things simple and short talking about yourself can be pretty difficult to do uh, you're trying to convince someone you don't know that you're qualified for a position without sound, sounding too cocky or too pompous uh, stick to what you know well and keep things short and sweet uh, structure your answers so that you're talking in 30 to 90 second chunks any less than you're likely to seem unqualified and any more the interviewer might lose interest and uh, kind of uh, go off the point and not not be really listening to what you say be sure not to use slang or off-color humor during your interview you, you never know when someone might take offense be personable try to come off as a genuinely likable person if you can being personal is about getting the interviewer's emotional side to like you and believe in you employers don't always hire the candidates most qualified for the job believe it or not but rather the candidates they like the best shake hands with the interviewer when you're leaving and exchange pleasantries uh, try to invest some feeling into that handshake and pleasantry even if you think you absolutely bombed the interview now let's get into the subject of how to construct and write a resume that get, gets results employers spend only about 20 to 25 seconds scanning a resume so your resume must work hard to quickly communicate your skills and your value think of it as a marketing tool that shows that you meet the needs of your potential employer let's first of all <laughs> let's define what a resume is for uh, a resume is basically an outline of your work experience uh, the portable skills you've developed uh, your work responsibilities while you were employed the achievements and accomplishments you made at your places of employment uh, your personality factors and your education effective resumes get noticed because they emphasize accomplishments and contributions made by you not just responsibilities or duties you had of that job uh, they're focused on skills and requirements needed by the employer for the position and thirdly they're concise well organized and easy to read before we get into describing in detail how to write an effective resume we first need to get an understanding of how a resume should be constructed and formatted because those who will be reviewing your resume expect to see your work history and your experience uh, presented in a standardized format with uh, sections they're really familiar with seeing so now I'd like to present a description of the various sections of a resume and the information that should be included in each of those sections to make them not only easy to follow by the reviewer but also effectively present your qualifications the best resume format to use according to Susan Ireland who's a recognized uh, resume expert 
is the reversed chronological resume format. Wow, you say, John, what in the world is that? Uh, the reverse chronological resume format presents your work history starting at the most recent job, and then each job listed after that, continuing back in time to your earliest position. Each position you held is placed under a job title, company name, length of time of employment, the month and year through month and year, and where the employment took place, city and state. In writing a resume, you should avoid using personal pronouns, I, me, and my, in describing responsibilities of a position you held or accomplishments you made. The proper way to describe a responsibility is responsible for doing such and such rather than using I was responsible for such and such. The ideal length of a resume, according to resume experts, is somewhere between 600 and 700 words. So you don't want too long or too short. Uh, many firms now scan applications and resumes by computer uh, to discover keywords for skills the employer is looking for. You leave out those critical skill, skill keywords, and your resume or application is likely to be discarded. Uh, you'll find keywords for the kind of job you're seeking by visiting job posting sites such as monster.com, snagajob.com, indeed.com, and others. Uh, you can find online by reviewing posting posted job descriptions, or employer requirements of jobs. Uh, these include phrases and industry keywords uh, for job-specific skills. If your resume includes industry keywords, uh, it's more likely to be selected for further review. Uh, let's look at some examples, uh, some co like computer skills. That would be uh, knowledgeable in the area of Microsoft Word, Microsoft Office, uh, or Microsoft PowerPoint. Have verbal and written communication skills is another key word. Experience, management, project management, development, team and leadership abilities, time management, problem solving, and many, many others. But be sure to only include words that are relevant uh, to your own listing of skills. You should match your listing of qualifications uh, to what the employer is seeking. Now, as a general note, a one-page resume is recommended unless you have extensive experience, and then you can create a two-page resume. But remember, even CEOs of major corporations are required to only have a two-page resume. Format your resume professionally by using fonts, that are easy to read, such as Times New Roman or Arial. Um, for font sizes, you ought to stay between uh, 10 and 12 point. Uh, your name can be larger than a 12. And then the margins, uh, the ideal margins are three-fourths of an inch all around, top, bottom, and, and sides. But you could go as low as a half an inch, but no smaller than that. Now, follow these general guidelines in each section. Let's, let's go into the, in each section. First of all, the, the first section is the heading. The heading uh, includes your name, current address, email, and home or cell number. Now, if you don't have an email address, ah, you can get a free one online by going to gmail.com and clicking on Create Account, and then just follow Google's instructions. Now make sure the phone number you entered is, not, is correct, the first thing, and then that it will be answered or rec a, a recorded message taken. Uh, don't get personal. Uh, don't include your picture, your age, your gender, your religion, your political affiliation, your ethnicity, uh, your marital status, uh, your Social Security number, uh, and salary expectations. None of those should be included. Uh, use bold caps for your name, on the top of page one, and then if, if you have a page, if you have a two-page resume, uh, at the top of page two, and then put section headings, skill headings, titles, or companies in boldface type as well. Never put the word resume at the top of your resume. Uh, that's obvious. Let's go to the next section. 
The next section is the career summary, summary of qualifications, or objective statement section. The goal of this section is to capture immediate employer interest by giving them a brief overview of your strengths or relevant, uh, relevant expertise and how you can contribute immediately. Most experts in how to write resumes prefer using career summaries uh, rather than objective statements because objective statements really don't highlight particular skills that you have to offer or accomplishments that you made on previous jobs. Here's an example of a, 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 an object, uh, a objective statement. Seeking a challenging, interesting position with good pay and benefits where I can use my skills to contribute to a company's earnings. Now let's compare that following uh, that to a the following career summary. Um, strong leadership skills, able to prioritize, delegate tasks, and make sound decisions. I'm an excellent team player with the ability to perform well under tight schedule requirements. My, uh, I, I'm skilled in analyzing problems and proposing uh, creative sol solutions. Now, I've said, I've said I in each one of those. Uh, that's because I'm speaking, but you, you just say skilled in analyzing problems and proposing creative solutions. Try to utilizing some words like this on your resume, and the phone will be ringing off the hook to get a hold of you. So then the principle involved here in this section is to spend time developing a career summary that immediately gets the potential employer's attention and accurately and powerfully describe you as a solution to their problems. Always use bulleted statements in your statements uh, rather than writing in paragraph form. I've seen people do this. It's so difficult for the reader. They, they, have, to, they have to go through all, these, uh, all those paragraphs to try to find out what your skills and accomplishments are. Now let's look at the professional experience section. In this section, list your position or job title, name of the company, department or division of the company, the location, city and state, dates employed, and a description of duties performed. And then a list of accomplishments for each job, start, starting with the most recent job and going back in time to each of the jobs you filled. Uh, to your earliest position. This section may include all your positions, paid and unpaid, volunteer or professional. Anal analyze each job with regard to the skills and abilities and accomplishments uh, that were gained. Quantify the statements you make. Think of money saved, time saved, or quantities of things done. And use action or power verbs. I'll give you a, a listing of power verbs later on in this video. Uh, be concise. Express your qualifications and accomplishments in short sentences and as direct as possible. Eliminate any unrelated information and any rep uh, repetitions. Uh, say what you want to say in the most direct way possible. Uh, rather than trying to impress with bigger words or more complex sentences. And then show that you're results-oriented. Whenever possible, prove that you have the desired qualifications through clear, strong statements of accomplishments rather than statements of potentials, talents, or responsibilities. Uh, indicate the results of your work done. Quantify these accomplishments whenever you can. Uh, additionally, preface skill and experience statements with these adjectives. Proven and demonstrated uh, to create this results oriented. You, say, you may say, John, you know, I really don't have a lot of work experience with a lot of responsibilities or skills, so how am I to write an impressive accomplishment statement? <laughs> Here, let me give you an example of a person whose only job experience was that he was a ditch digger. I notice his accomplishment statement when I, when I get there. First of all, the job description, responsible for hand digging ditches for various sizes of pipe to be laid for a company, for a construction company, uh, where heavy equipment for ditch digging was not available or could not be used. The accomplishment, 
developed and implemented a technique for digging a ditch that reduced the overall time to complete the project by 50%, thereby saving time and money. Wow, sounds pretty impressive, doesn't it? What was the technique? Well, he suggested using two people to dig the ditch, one at each end. Uh, so the ditch time to, to, to dig that ditch was cut in half. Everybody makes contributions and accomplishments on jobs. You just have to think back what you did and where you saved time, money, uh, and, and just list them. The next section is the education section. Uh, ed education is usually more important. Experience, I mean, is usually more important than education. Uh, usually. This is because if you, if you have, uh, you, you gain more qualifications uh, are, are developed from experience um, rather than from your education. This section uh, should cover your formal edu education, your institutions attended, the uh, diploma degrees held at the high school, GED, uh, associate arts, bachelor of arts received. Uh, list the high school or college, the city or state where it was located, or where your GED was received along with the date received. Uh, for graduation dates uh, on, a, uh, on a college degree, list of graduation month and year. And then some other sections here, certifications and special training section. Uh, indicate any courses you've taken that demonstrate knowledge and, and are useful for the position. A volunteer community experience section. These activities may provide you with communication, leadership, teamwork, event planning, budgeting, fundraising, and other highly valued skills. Use the same format as the experience section. In the next section, extracurricular activity section. You may not have any of these, but your extracurricular activities may offer great portable or transferable skills. Uh, they may also be an opportunity to show your interest and in how well-rounded you are. Uh, use the same format as the experience section, uh, with or without descriptions. Skills gained and accomplishments made should be included here as well. And then the last section should include this statement, references available upon re on request. I've put together uh, a three PowerPoint charts to show the chronological resume format uh, with the sections shown that I've just gone through. Um, I, on the first PowerPoint chart here, uh, you, you see uh, the name, the street address, city and state. That's the heading. Uh, list your email address. Again, if you don't have an email uh, account, you can get one free by going to gmail.com. Uh, list your phone number. List the phone number that will be answered or recorded, as I've mentioned. And then let's get into the career summary section. Uh, now, these are only examples uh, to show you how to write the section. Don't use these uh, unless you have these skills. Uh, decisive leadership skills, able to prioritize, delegate tasks, and make sound decisions. Excellent team player with the ability to perform well under tight schedule requirements. Strong uh, problem-solving skills, ability to analyze problems effectively, and develop creative solutions. You'll notice that each qualification statement begins with a different verb. Don't repeat them, add, have a different one. In the second PowerPoint chart, we go into the professional experience section. Um, that, again, you, it starts with your most recent position. Uh, and then going back from there, you have a job title, the company name, city and state, dates employed, uh, and then make a bulleted list of duties performed first, and then a list of accomplishments. Don't leave that out. Uh, additional job titles to show your complete work history. Uh, then the education section. Uh, list your high school or college, uh, the city and state. Uh, if you've got a high school diploma, list that. GED, if you got that, what month and year. And if you, and if you graduated from a college, a degree, what the degree was. Uh, and then when you graduated. Uh, and then the third PowerPoint chart here is 
uh, certifications and special trainings, as I've mentioned, bulleted list, uh, volunteer activity accomplishments, uh, a bulleted list, extracurricular activities, uh, refer to my previous comments, and then finally, references available upon request. Now let's go through five tips on how to write a great resume. Tip number one, edit, proofread, and critique your resume. Can't leave this out. Organize your resume so that the most relevant information appears closer to the top so it's sure to get noticed. Review it for content. Be sure that you have effectively conveyed the right skills, abilities, and accomplishments you've made. Then proofread it. Remember, spelling, capitalization, or punctuation errors are 100% unacceptable. If you're not sure of how to correctly spell something or how to punctuate, uh, have somebody else who's knowledgeable in these areas to read and critique your resume. It's okay. Tip number two, identify accomplishments, not just job descriptions or what you were responsible for or a list of duties you performed. Hiring managers, uh, uh, they, they seek candidates that can help solve a problem or satisfy a need within their company. Uh, so consequently, you can't be a solution to the problem without stating how you solve similar problems in other companies. Focus on what, your contra what contributions you made to the job, not just what your job was. There's a big difference. Include one or two-line description of your responsibilities first, and then list a, uh, a, a group of accomplishments that you made. It's easy to slip into that mode where you simply say, I'm just going to list job duties on my resume. Uh, let's, let's list, f uh, for example, here. I attended group meetings and recorded minutes. Well, that's what you did. Uh, work with children in a daycare setting. Uh, however, employers don't care so much about what, what you did as what you accomplished. Uh, in those various activities. Let's look at those same uh, things uh, in a different way uh, with, with accomplishment statements. Used a laptop computer to record weekly minutes and compiled them in a Microsoft Word-based file for future reference. The second one developed three daily activities for preschool children and prepared them for a 10-minute holiday program performance. Let's look at number three. Tip number three, quantify those accomplishments. By using percentages to show increases in amount of work done, dollars saved, increases in production, time saved, number of employees that work you worked with, Using numbers to highlight your accomplishments can't be overemphasized. Peter Vogt, who is senior contributing writer for Monster.com, gives an example. He says, how to use numbers to highlight accomplishments on your resume. Suppose your hiring manager is looking at a resume, and which of the following statements would impress you the most? Wrote news releases. Secondly, wrote 25 news releases in a three-week period under daily deadlines. Clearly, the second statement carries more weight. Why? Because it uses numbers to quantify the writer's accomplishment, giving it a context that helps the reviewer understand the degree of difficulty involved in that task. Numbers are powerful resume tools that will help, you, uh, help your accomplishments get the attention they deserve uh, from prospective employers. With just a little thought, you can find effective ways to quantify your successes uh, on your resume. Here are a few examples. Think money. Organizations are always uh, concerned about money. So think about ways you saved, earned, or managed money in your full-time jobs, part-time job, or even extracurricular activities. And then think time. You've heard the old saying, time is money. And it's true. Companies and organizations are constantly looking for ways to save time and do things more efficiently. So whatever you can do on your resume to show that you've saved time, make time, or manage time will grab your reader's immediate attention. 
here's some time-oriented enter entries that, uh, that appear on a typical resume. Assisted with twice monthly payroll activities, ensuring employees were paid as expected on time. Or suggested procedures that decreased average order processing time from 10 minutes to 5 minutes. The next one, think amounts. You know, it's very easy to neglect mentioning how much or how many of something you produced or, or you've overseen. Note the difference in these two statements. Developed lesson plans. B, developed lesson plans for two classes of 20 students each. Don't fall into the trap of excluding numbers. The more you focus on time, money, and amounts in relation to your accomplishments, the better you'll present your successes and highlight your potential. And the more you'll realize just how much you really have to offer that prospective employer. Many of us underestimate our achievements or accomplishments, according to Kim Isaacs, who's a founder of ResumePower.com, who's a resume expert. Employers look for achievers, uh, candidates who go beyond, above and beyond their job duties. Uh, your resume allows you to describe your best accomplishments, so employers want to take a chance on you. If you think you have no career accomplishments, think again. Everybody has them. It's just a matter of digging down and pinpointing what they are. Remember my ditch digger example. And then tip number four, uh, identify and list your skills. If you're including your skills in your career summary, uh, consider the skills that would be important to the job you're seeking. The best way to get started is to search job descriptions and review several postings for your target job. Now look at the ideal requirements in the, in the ads and write a list of frequently report, uh, repeated skills. Uh, next, create a list of your matching skills that you can incorporate in your resume. Let, let's look at some general skills listings. So find out, you really need to understand where your skills fit. Uh, let's look first of all at some interpersonal skills. That's relating well with other people, uh, you know, uh, uh, motivating people, resolving conflict. Um, what about leadership skills? That's, that's decision making, team building, managing, supervising. Uh, what about communication skills? That's, that's instructing and, and uh, persuading or selling and presenting and public speaking, training even. Uh, and then organizational skills, that's uh, follow through, uh, uh, meeting deadlines, planning, time management, setting and meeting goals. All these kind of guide you as to what, uh, what heading of skill that you have. And then tip number five, for every skill, job described or accomplishment mentioned, use the most active, impressive verb you can think of at the beginning of a sentence. I call these power verbs. Here's an example of what I mean. Uh, let's compare these two statements during a, uh, describing a job responsibility. Responsible for. This is a very weak verb statement. More powerful verb to use would be developed, fashioned, established, formulated, generated, implement, implemented, just to name a few. Remember to use language that sizzles. In other words, use active and strong energetic words that are literally many hundreds and maybe thousands of action verbs use, useful for giving your resume that added touch that can help you get an interview. To find additional verbs, you can go to google.com and just search a list of action verbs. And when writing your resume, you experience verb fatigue. Uh, I, I've compiled a PowerPoint chart of, of a partial list of action verbs to help you with that tendency. But to keep from boring you, I'm not going to go and read them off to you. But you can see from the, this list how valuable action verbs can be in describing your experience, your skills, and your accomplishments on resumes and job applications. If this class has been a benefit to you, please subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below so that YouTube will message you when class number eight will be available for viewing. 
be sure to tune in to our next session of Escaping the Revolving Door of Prison. A session number eight entitled Improving Self-Control and Avoiding Thinking Errors, Part One, when we will be covering how to go about developing and strengthening your self-control and then discussing 10 common thinking errors that we need to overcome to help us change our negative behavior. This is John LaMaster saying, I'll be looking for you in our next session.